Hey everybody, happy Labor Day weekend. I'm curious to know what you're doing this weekend. So put it in the chat, what you're doing this weekend. And if you're watching later, hi, please put it in the comments. I'd love to know. Um, today I finished uh, drafting. I have 130 drafts right now. I've got about 20 pictures to put in. You can see right now, I just have a few left to photograph and I'll probably do those when I get back from my trip. I have enough now. Just gotta get those pictures loaded. So let's see who's here. Uh, Glenn was here. He's gonna be watching LSU football games. So he may have left already. Santa, hi, welcome. Um, if you guys wanna hear this, this is, uh, this is what I hear when Santa calls me. You have a collect call from Santa Claus. Pick up or I'm not bringing you anything. Would you like to accept? You have a collect call. That's what I hear when Barry calls me. <laughs> it's hysterical. Listening while taking photos. Hey, Craig, how are you? Glad you made it here. Hey, Maggie, I miss you, my friend. Good to see you here. And Ciro's back. Hi, Ciro. Thanks for returning. So it's always good to have you here in the chat. And Rita's here. Hi. Wow, we got quite a few people here. And Mike. Hi, Mike. Uh, let's see what this is. Saying hi. What if we don't want to hear it? Well, too bad. You got to hear it anyway. <laughs> uh, had my five grandkids for the last two days, age 10 to 18 months. You're exhausted. That's Sue. Hey, Sue. Welcome back. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. I had a babysit my 12 year old niece she really doesn't need a sitter but i was amazed at how easy it was to sit with a 12 year old um, instead of a three month old and a three year old it wasn't as exhausting yeah my ky okay um have a lot of notes here i printed them out i'm going to check them off so that i don't forget to say i have a lot to do tonight i'm not going to ship it is shipping sunday but tomorrow's a holiday i forgot about that when i did the key the thumbnail so we're not going to ship and i don't have that many items like you guys know my i think i'm down like 50 something percent so i only have like five items to ship um saying sue i'm ti i'm tired just imagining that well maggie you know what that's like um just saying hi oh does christy here hey christy how are you good to see you here so tonight i'm going to talk about two things i'm going to do a tutorial on the new way I have found to take inventory, count my items, and make sure that they're accurate. And then after that, I'm going to talk about some more about my slow sales numbers. We're going to see my numbers. I haven't even looked at them today because I don't want to know, but we're going to look at them and why I think that I'm not getting sales and then what I'm going to do about it. And most of you know, I'm going to be leaving on Wednesday to go out of town for a week. So I have a plan. It's always good to have a plan, right? So I'm I'm still not worrying about it. I'm just, well, I am back here. I'm worrying about it, but only two to ship had to cancel an order on some Miss Me jeans because they asked to, Craig, or was there an issue with the jeans? Let me know. Cutco knives, always buy them. Okay. Maggie, happy the weather was good and they could be in the pool. Isn't that the truth? That tires them out, doesn't it? Water always tires them out. Yep. Um, okay, there, for people who are watching later, the ways that you can help this channel is to comment on this video, hit the thumbs up or down, whichever. Share this channel with others. And also you can use my affiliate links below for Amazon. You don't have to purchase those items. Just click on a link and shop as you normally would for your family or business. And in 20, for anything you buy in 24 hours, I get a small kickback. I would appreciate that. Sold a set, three steak knives for $90. Well, I think I'm up at, I'm $25 today. Something like that. I don't know. We'll check it in a little while. I just did have another sale, so maybe it's gone up a little bit. I don't know. It's sad, guys. It's really sad. Um, do we have any concerns in the community or any birthdays this week coming up? I, the next live stream I will be doing will be from North Carolina. As long as um, we are able to do it, we're going to try to do it Sunday night. Uh, Barry said I didn't ask him first. I thought I did, but I'm going to be live <laughs> and show you some of the things that I bought on the trip. Talk about it. Need some juju. I'm going to play that right now, Craig. So let me know if you make a sale during the show and I will play a song for you. Here we go. Good luck, everybody.
to give you some luck. I'll put the banner down there to remind you to let me know if you make a, a sale during the show. So my sales have been trending upward, but this weekend was dismal. I have zero sales right now for Tuesday. Okay. To ship out on Tuesday, you mean? Okay. Well, you're not alone. And we're going to talk a little bit that in the second part of the show. All right. On Wednesday at 5 p.m., there's going to be a video uploaded for my August sales. I am going to be switching months every other month. Um, last month, I showed you items that sold very quickly within the month. This time, I'm going to be showing you items that sold in August for good profit. And I also threw a few surprise items that sold quickly in there. So I hope you will check that out, especially if you are a mall brand clothing seller. <sighs> Also, my OCD podcast is uploading tomorrow at 5 a.m. Central Time on Spotify, and it will also be uploading on my new YouTube channel. If you or someone you know has OCD, please contact me privately for the link. And um, today I did my first interview, and it went really well. So I was very nervous about it, but it went okay. I'm, I'm really excited. It kind of got me a little bit more excited. Right now I'm just nervous. <laughs> So, all right, so we're going to talk about, um, oh, Beth, I'm so excited for your podcast. Well, you know, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, thank you, Maggie. I appreciate the support. Okay, so the first topic is I'm going to do a tutorial on the new way I'm going to be taking inventory without printing out anything on paper, and it's to assure that anything listed on eBay and Poshmark are in my boxes. All right. It's also going to ensure that everything in the box is listed and also to catch any errors in coding, photos, prices, anything like that. I'm really excited to show it to you. Raise your hand if inventory is a real pain in the butt for you. Do you even do it? Um, even if you're not a clothing seller, I hope that you will learn something from this tutorial because perhaps you could take what I'm doing and maybe tweak it to make it your own if you're looking for a way to do this. So in order to do this, I have to share my screen. So um, let me go ahead and move you guys over here. I'm going to have to put the dreaded glasses on. They glare, but at least they're not crooked like my purple ones. Um, let me tell you how I used to take inventory. I used to have, let's just say I had 135 sweaters. I would go box by box and I would uh, pick up number one. I'd go to Poshmark and see if it was listed. And I'd also go on my Excel sheet and see if it was on my Excel sheet correctly with the correct number. If it wasn't on Poshmark, I didn't worry about it because not everything on, that's not on Poshmark is on, e you know, on everything's on eBay. But if it's not on Poshmark, that doesn't mean it's on eBay. So if it was on Poshmark. To me, that meant it was on eBay, right? Um, shouldn't have done it that way, for one thing. Um, and then I would just go to the next one. So basically what I was doing was I was catching things that were in the box that were no longer listed. And maybe after a year of doing this, I maybe found 10 items that were no longer listed, and that was it. All right. But as you guys know, a few months ago, I got stuck selling things twice. I always run the eBay duplicate listing scanner the first of the month and the 15th of the month to make sure I don't have any duplicate listings. Over the last two years, I don't think I've ever had any duplicate listings. A couple of years ago, I did when I was selling appliance parts because they weren't actually duplicates, but they were the same part. And so eBay was reading it as these are possibly um, duplicate listings. You need to check it out. But I don't think I've had any since I've been selling clothing. So that hasn't been a problem. All right. Um, let me go ahead and go back up here because I want to make sure that I'm I'm reading all of the comments as well. Hi, Taryn, Tara and Jim. Hey, Tom. Good to see you here. So if you make a sale during the show, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this topic and then uh, tell me when I go to the next topic and then we'll do the song because I'm afraid I'm going to get sidetracked and, you know, I am drinking. I am a two-fisted drinker tonight. I'm drinking wine in one hand for anxiety for being on live and I'm drinking Diet Coke in the other hand because I'm exhausted. So depending on how I'm feeling at any moment, 
you'll see what I'm drinking. So let me know what you're drinking tonight. Yours needs CPR, Sue. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Jim and Tara are here. Tom's here. Look at all these people coming in. Great to see you, Tom. Hey, Adam, how are you? Adam did a show yesterday with Randy. If you haven't checked that out, uh, please go and watch Adam's show. It was very informative. All right. So how am I going to do this? Well, I think the first thing I'm going to do is show you my Excel sheet. For those of you who have not seen my Excel sheet, and I do this to keep from making mistakes. I do this to double check myself, I guess is what, you know, I like to have like checks and balances. So let's go ahead and look at my Excel sheet real quick. All right, so the reason this is yellow is that means I took inventory on the, that box and then I took green, I took inventory on that box. That's what those highlights are for. So you can tell I've been doing inventory on the geometric. So the way it is, is I have everything by pattern. So all my geometric patterns are in the geo category and then each one has a number. And then when this item here sells, I will take it off. And then the next time I have an item that is geometric in pattern, I will assign it the new number, the same number. So I reuse the numbers because I'm really bad with numbers and I don't want to get up into the four, five, six digits. So I have a lot of geometric patterns. I'm already down to, and y'all are going to listen to my wife cuss right now because we're losing. Okay, then there's the Paisley shelf. Obviously, I haven't been taking inventory on that. And that's how I do it. I do it by category. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing. So let's see, what can I show you next? Um, I'm afraid something's going to pop up here that I don't want to show you. Okay. Let's just take a look at this real quick. Let's go to manage my store. All right. My store categories. All right, what I used to do is you have two store categories, number one and number two. Number two category is uh, the month that I list it. Spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. And then number one category was uh, women's tops size 1X, women's tops 2X, women's size 3X. And I did that in the beginning because I sometimes I didn't know what I had of anything. And so I would pull that up and go, oh, I don't have very many 1X tops. Next time I go, I really need to look for 1X tops. It served me well for a while, but I don't really need it anymore. Okay, so what I did was I took every single item in my store and I moved it into the category other. All right. So there were 3,600 items in here, other. And then I made new categories for my first store. So like I have my paisley, my pink, my plaid, my purple, my red, short, skinny, straight leg, and so forth. And that took me about an hour to do because in my listings, you will see that I have in my SKU what they are. So let's go ahead and just look at some of my active listings. All right, so in the SKU, come on, I disabled my my edge, so this should not be taking as long. Sorry about that. Okay, in my SKU, you know, I have SKI for skinny, NOV for novelty, FLO for floral, PAI for paisley. So that's all I did. I just pulled it up. I looked for everything that had skinny, SKI, and I put it in that new category. So let's go to one of my drafts right now. Um, let's do one that I updated today because that will be correct. What's today? Today is September 3rd. Okay, I just, I just did this draft. So if I pull this draft up, it's going to go live probably in a couple of days. So now my number one store category is geometric. And then my second store category is what I call Royal Flush. Those are items that are seasonal that I want to stay on for two years. Those are sweaters, shorts, bathing suits, tank tops. I want them to go a full two years before I mark them down 50%. So no longer, this would have normally said um, women's top 4X. Right now it says geometric. All right, let me go ahead and get rid of that. That's what it looks like. 
Okay, so I deleted all of those categories and added new ones. All right. Now, some of you know that every day I end 200 listings and I relist them. And when you relist items now, it gives them a new number. And I'm not going to be doing that now when I'm doing inventory. And I'm going to show you why. Um, so let's do... I'm going to just go back to active here. So when I get back from my trip, the first section that I'm going to inventory is going to be sweaters, because as some of you know, a few months ago, I had some sweaters stolen out of my inventory room, and I just would feel better if I go through every sweater box and make sure that all of my sweaters are there. I mean, I'm just, I still am worried that some of those sweaters have been swiped. So right now I have 133 sweaters, all right? So when I get back from North Carolina, I will pull this up. I will end all of these items. All right, I'm not gonna do it now. And then, so there will be 133 in my ended listings, okay? Is there any way that I can make this like, uh, can I make this like where you can see me too? No, I don't want it that way. Um, I don't want it that way. There. Okay. That's what I want. Okay. So what I will do is after I've ended each item, I mean, all 133 sweaters, they're in ended items. I will bring my sweaters in here. The other good thing about this is, uh, the weather's getting cooler and I have a desk out in my inventory room so I can actually take my computer out there and then I don't have to bring the boxes in here. And that'll be nice. Okay. But let's just say I brought the first tub in. So what I will do is I will take the first item from the box, sweater number one. I will find it on here, you know, wherever it is. I can do a search if I want to, or I can just, there's only 133. It's not going to take me that long. I'll find it and I will hit relist. All right. And that means it's in my hand. It's listed on eBay and I will relist it. Okay. I will also check on my Excel sheet just to make sure that it is on my Excel sheet correctly. Now, this is better if you have two screens. You could do it without two screens, but it will be a lot of back and forth. All right. So this one is here. I hit relist. I might look and see if there's any errors and then I will hit list and it will and it will go away and then I will have 132 sweaters. All right. And I'll pick up sweater number two and I'll find it on the list. Okay. Well, what if it's not on the list? If it's not on the list, that means it's not listed. <laughs> it's one of those that went away. I will check Poshmark to make sure that it's not on Poshmark. I will take it off of my Excel sheet and I will throw it over in my death pile. And the next time I'm listing, I will rephotograph it and make a whole new listing. All right. Um, when I have gone through all, somebody is talking to me, sorry. When I have gone through all 133 sweaters, if I have any sweaters left here that are ended, that means that um, I've either made a mistake, maybe I've missed one, but what, normally I put a big tub that's empty and I go one by one. All right. Um, I will see if I have any ended items left. If I do, it's already sold and the ended item needs to be deleted. All right. And it also needs to be deleted on Poshmark. That's how I'm going to do it. And I don't have to print anything out guys. I'm so happy. I don't know what you guys think about that, but it, I don't know why I didn't think about it before because I'm already coding my items in the store category. So let me go back up here and see who's here because I can see people have come in and I want to make sure I'm, I'm getting everyone. Coke zero for the win. Yep. Brita water. Okay. Tell Santa I need a stack of $100 bills. Have to get an HVAC system and a hot water heater soon. Barry is listing. 
to this. So hopefully he heard that. He is taking photos right now. Maggie says, I have unfortunately had to cancel my trip. Yeah, we are very sad about that, Maggie. I'm hoping that Maggie will um, come visit me though soon and we're both thrifting. Yeah. You're a slacker, Tom. I'm a worker. Well, I don't have much to show for it right now. And we're going to talk about my numbers in a minute. You're going to be totally uh, blown away. Hey, Jennifer, how are you? Good to see you here. Everybody's just saying hi. Everybody's sorry about your trip, Maggie. Yeah, we are very sad, but we will meet one day. I know we will. What do you think about that? If you are looking for an inventory system, I'm thinking what you can do is look in your inventory room, divide your inventory into chunks. So let's say you have glassware, you have buttons, and you have pillows, all right, or whatever. You're going to inventory all the glassware together, all the buttons together, and all the pillows. So you would make your first store category um, glassware, buttons, pillows. Then you would end all of your glassware, and you would double check that you had everything that was listed, everything in your hand is listed. And if it's listed and it's not there, then you know you need to take it off. So you don't have this problem that I have where you're selling things that have already sold. I think this is going to be a really, I'm really excited about it because I kind of knew in the back of my head that what I was doing was not the most efficient way. Um, Maggie says, once my life settles down, I will be flying out to Texas for thrifting. I am so excited. We're, we're going to plan that. We also talked about a cruise. Yeah, unfortunately, I have not requested my birth certificate yet. Things have been pretty crazy. You need to get on my butt about that, Maggie, because I still want to do a cruise next year. So, but I have a feeling it's going to be too late to do a March cruise now. But I, I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Okay. Now, let's talk about my numbers. Oh my gosh. Let's just go ahead and look at my numbers, guys. It's, I haven't looked today because it just makes my blood pressure go up. So I can't be the only one. Do you guys watch your numbers every day? Like I, I try not to right now because it's just getting me upset. As you know, I am used to thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a week minimum in sales. All right, so let's just go to the overview. Let's just go ahead and be real here. It was going up there for a little while, see, and then it went down. So today I'm at, I got three orders to ship from the weekend. Today I'm at forty eight dollars fifty one cents. Now something I have noticed today is the other a little while ago I had six items that I could send offers on. Normally during the day, I send out probably 30 to 35 offers a day. I mean, that's how much action I get in my store. But recently, I've had maybe three or four a day that I can send offers to. When I've been sending these offers, I send a little note that says, um, our store says that we are away, but we can ship on Tuesday if you pay now. And I think that's how I got my sale today because she was I was messaging her with her and she's like, I don't know if I want to wait till the... 26 to receive my item for those of you who want to know how i did time away and handling that was on my last live stream on friday i don't want to repeat myself but it was kind of a big mess but tuesday i have to change my handling time to 10 days because i had to have that buffer for people not paying i, I would be interested in the chat though i don't have any items that are not paid for i have a feeling that this um, immediate payment may have been kicking in for the majority of people it's been a long time of course i haven't had any sales in a while i've had poshmark sales um but you know normally i've got four five six seven items sometimes that i'm waiting for payment on i don't have any of course i don't have that many sales but i'm just saying over the last few days even when i did have you know over a hundred, this was $199. Everybody paid within 30 minutes. I got the payment. So are they kicking in for you or not? I'd really like to know. Let me go ahead and go back up before I go to the next thing. 
Hey, Grams and Pops Vintage. Hi, how are you? I'd be interested to know how you found me. Uh, does anyone know Grams and Pops Vintage? Did you hear about my channel from one of these lovely people? It is so good to have you here. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're located, or if you, you know, what you sell. I'd love to know about you. Not kicking in for me. I have weights on most of my offer payment. Okay, so that's not kicking in for Maggie. She's still got some people waiting to pay. Okay. All right, so as you can see, I am down 39.4% for the last 31 days. Now, when I woke up this morning, it was down 44%. I almost had a freaking heart attack. <laughs> uh, but that's beyond the point. So now let's go over here and go to this month. I'm scared to look at this number, guys. I haven't looked at it. Okay. I am down 66.3% from last month. I had a feeling it was at least 60, but I sure didn't think it was 66.3%. I mean, give me a break. I've been selling since 2017. I'm top rated. I have 100% positive feedback. I have no late shipments. I have no re disputes out. I send offers. I send coupons. I send every, you know, sale. I send everything. Give me a break. Let's look at this year. I Friday, it was down 1.8%. What's today? Down 2.9%. Now, when I did my car chat last Monday, I was down 3.8%. So I'm still holding kind of strong on the year. I'm not going to complain about that. Rams and Pops Vintage, how are you doing? Okay. I, I probably won't look at this graph much while I'm gone because it's just going to freaking stress me out. All right. Let's go ahead and look at, before I go on, listing impressions down, click-through rate down, page views way down, conversion rate down, not a whole lot, okay? But there's nothing, nobody's clicking, so why would that be high, right? Like, why would that be way down? Nobody's clicking. Nobody's seeing my items. This is what I think is going on. Nobody is seeing my items, all right? And I showed this graph the other day, but we're going to go, I'm going to look at it a little bit more. You can't sell something when nobody can see your items. You can't. This was last month. Look how high this was, right? And look way up here. This is today. People are not seeing my items. How can they buy when they can't see them? Now, I'm going to tell you what I think is going on. And, and this comes from, if y'all are not following Josh Galt, um, raise your hand if you watch Josh Galt. He's my new uh, favorite show. He has a show every weekday at 12 p.m. and uh, Central, my time. And he was saying that, or maybe someone in the chat was saying that they think that a couple of years ago when eBay was requiring all these item specifics that we had to fill in, remember that mess? I think I had like 2000 required item specifics. At that time I was selling appliance parts and it was wanting weird, weird specifics on little parts that I could, I mean, I had no way of filling them out. I didn't know what to put. They didn't apply. The reason he thinks that they were doing that is because they were getting prepared for AI. And that now that AI has kicked in, for those of you who don't know, artificial intelligence, that their gap, the AI is gathering all those item specifics that we put in and they're creating a draft for you. And that eBay knew they were going to this and that's why they asked us for all these um, required item specifics. I don't know. It makes a lot of sense. Um, I wanted last week, I went to do drafts and I pulled up my templates. Well, let's just say I was listing a tunic. The top five, the brand, the size, the color, and the, you know, men's or women's was there. But when you got to the bottom, material wasn't there. No place to put the material. 
The features weren't there, no place to put stretchy, keyhole neck, elastic waist, pockets. It wasn't there. There was no place to put machine washable, dry clean only, hand wash only. There was nothing. Accents couldn't put rhinestones studded. It was not there. Okay. So what I did was, I was like, what? So what I did was I went down in my description and I typed them out. Elastic waist, pockets, um, you know, keyhole neck, hand wash. I put all the things that weren't there. And then I saved the draft. Well, the next day I woke up and I went to list my items, my 12. Same thing. They weren't there. I had to list them without the item specifics. Now they tell us we have to have them, but how can you do it when they don't have them? But I went ahead and did it. Well, the day after that, I was loading pictures and they came back. But since I hadn't filled them out, they were blank. So, you know, I could go down to my description. I'm like, yep, this is one of those ones because I typed it all out. So I'd go and I put in all the features, you know, how to, how to wash it, um, what accents it had, material. I mean, that's a really big deal. I had to put the material in and um, they're back. Now, what is that about? I don't know. But they're obviously doing something right now that is affecting my account and a lot of other people's accounts. So, um, I really interested in knowing, you know, what you guys are experiencing because some people, their accounts are fine and I'm happy for them, but I gotta, I gotta figure this out. Um, not kicking in for you. Okay. Getting ready for Monday packing. Blah. You got a lot of packages to pack out grams and pops. I hope so. I'm happy for you. You're selling vintage, huh? I've been cross-listing a ton lately. Yeah, because I'm selling more on Poshmark, truthfully, than I am on eBay right now. And that never happens, ever. All right, so what am I going to do about this? All right. Well, one of my choices I thought about is I could get into a new niche in addition to clothing. You know, it would have to be something very small because I have very limited space to store anything. Like I can't do appliance parts anymore. Okay. That just takes up too much room. I would have to do something as small as buttons or stickers. Okay. And if I went out and I bought all this stuff and I listed it, who's to say that they're going to be able to see my items? Because if they can't see the items I already have listed, how are they going to see the items that I'm listing, even though they're in a new niche? So I'm thinking that's probably not a good idea on my part. Number one, I'm going to have to invest more money. I'm going to have to have another place to store everything. And I don't really think it's going to do anything. I don't, you know, people always tell me, well, Beth, you sell mall brand clothing. Why do you sell mall brand clothing? And I, my response to that is somebody has to do it because there are lots of people out there who don't buy expensive clothing. They buy mall brand clothing and I want to provide it to them at a good price and with great customer service. And I've had no problems. I mean, you guys have seen my numbers. I was at 16,000 in my 90 day total four months ago. I'm now down under 13,000 for my 90 day total. It's bad. Why are the people who are buying before aren't buying now? Okay. I don't get it because when you look at my impressions, they're not seeing it. You can tell me all the time in the world that you want that the economy is bad and it's that time of year. Well, it wasn't that time of year last year. It was that time of year last year and they were buying. And it was that time of year two weeks ago and they were buying and they could see my items and now they can't see them. There's a reason. I'm, I'm cross posting to Poshmark. Um, I talked to Bridget today. I think she was talking about, you know, asking me why, um, why I'm not on Mercari. And I just told her, I just can't do it. I can't do a third platform right now. I tried it for a month. You know, maybe I didn't give it a good enough shot, but it was, it was impossible for me to keep up, you know, what was on Mercari, what wasn't on Mercari. And I had no bites. I sent out lowball offers. Nobody accepted in a month. I had 250 items up there and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to end up making a mistake. And, um, and I'm going to end up, 
you know, screwed. So I, I took them all down. I got frustrated. Normally before when I was on Mercari, it either sold in the first month or two or it didn't sell at all. Um, although my one shop will end stale Mercari listings and relist them, which is a good thing. eBay is too demanding, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, they're just, they're changing things. All the coding is going on top of coding. Every time they change something, it's messing with everything. You know, jewelry, that is small. Yeah, and I... <laughs> Unfortunately, I gave all my jewelry to someone else. I had, we had an Amer Native American collection. I sold quite a bit of it. And then the rest of it, I, it was very difficult for me to photograph Mike with my arthritis. And I was getting frustrated, especially with the earrings, getting them in the photograph and manipulating all the little tiny parts on the necklaces and stuff. And I just got really frustrated. So I probably sold about two thirds of our collection and then the rest I sold to another reseller and I don't know how she's done with it, but I just couldn't do it anymore. And I sold my jewelry mostly on Etsy and Poshmark. I sold a little bit of it on eBay, but most of it sold on Poshmark or Etsy. I wouldn't waste time on Mercari, my opinion. Okay. Well, some people do great on Mercari. Okay. But I don't know. Maybe I didn't give it good enough shot, but I think all it did prove to me is, Beth, you're not ready for a third platform. When you retire and you don't have a full-time job, me, um, that's when I'll have more time to devote and really um, be conscientious when something sells, take it off, uh, possibly. I mean, there's no, to me, there's no reason for me to get List Perfectly or Vindu because what they do is they cross post to three or four platforms. When something sells, you go over to that Vendu or List Perfectly, you take it off and it takes it off all platforms. Well, I only have two. So I would be going over to Vendu to tell them to take it off of Poshmark or vice versa. Well, I do that anyway. I either take it off of Poshmark or I take it off of eBay. So why should I pay somebody to do that. I'm already doing that. Now, when I had a third one, then yes, that would be beneficial to me to pay that money. My thing sits, sit and sit with no sales, but it's my fault for not doing my reselling work. Well, Christy, you know, don't beat yourself up about it. You have other things going on right now that you're focusing on. And, and I'm, I'm proud of you for the things that you're focusing on right now. And you know, I'm always here to help you. Made it. Glenn, is the game over? Who won? By the cussing in the other room, you can hear that we probably lost because we were playing the Yankees and they kicked our butt tonight, as usual. So, good to see you here, Glenn. Are you going to make a sale tonight, Glenn? I was surprised how well Randy's daughter did on Mercari as a new seller. Yeah, I was too, and I'm not really sure. I don't remember, did he, she say, did he say what she was selling over there? Because, um, now... If you guys know reselling with Esme, um, I know Christy knows her. That's all she does is sell on Mercari. She doesn't sell on any other platform. And it is easy. And it is easy to list on. It's easy to ship on. But I was on there for like three years. And I made very few sales. Very few sales. And the ones that I made were super low. Like they would, you know, an $8 sale a $10 sale. Like I wasn't getting the money over there either. I mean, I guess it would be a great place to put things that I didn't really care um, how much it sold for, but I, I just didn't have a lot of luck over there. Trying to go. Photoshop comes with Venmo. Vendu, yeah. I use Flip and it's free. Yeah. A lot of people are happy with Flip. A lot of people. Aren't you using Flip, um, Craig? think so baby clothing oh that's right she was selling baby clothing over there but i don't know how much money she was getting for by the way i told you guys that i was starting to sell maternity a little bit because my my daughter um just had a baby and she gave me all her maternity clothes and i thought well i'll sell them you know i'll see how they do and if they do well maybe that's another niche for me and so um i've already sold like three items and she only gave me like 10 items okay one of them sold today on Poshmark for really good money. And it was just a hoodie. Uh, and it was like a nursing hoodie. And so 
I'm thinking that that might be later on down the line a niche for me because number one, my items don't cost that much. Like I don't sell things that are 60, 70, $80. And so women who are pregnant, they, you know, they're only going to wear it for what, four or five months, maybe they don't want to spend that kind of money. Most of them, but like I did find a really nice business top at the thrift store the other day and it was by motherhood. It was very classy. And so I bought it because I think, you know, somebody who's working in a corporate, you know, office who's pregnant, would like to buy it. And so I get 15, $20 for it, but I'm, I'm, that's one niche that I'm thinking I might, but I'm going to be very picky. Like I'm not going to go and buy all the maternity jeans that they have. And I'm not going to go buy all the maternity tops that they have. It's got to be a very good brand and in very, very, very good condition. Half time was at friends down the street. Okay. Her sales have dipped too. Okay. Well that, I'm sorry for that, but that's good to know. Thank you for telling me that, Christy. So she's on Mercari and her her um, sales have dipped to 17 LSU 14. Uh, that that doesn't make sense. Who's got 17 and who's got 14? <laughs> I know there's supposed to be two teams and two scores. So can you retype that, please, Glenn? I mean, I know I haven't had that much wine. You're on your iPad. That's okay. Yes. Okay. So he says, yes. Good idea. Okay. Well, it's just been a thought because that's what I did. I said, I'm going to list these 10 items and see how they sell. And I, I mean, I just listed them last month and I've already sold like four. So, and they were just jeans and, you know, nursing things were a couple of them were nursing things, which I think is also a kind of a niche there. Remember, post office is closed tomorrow. Absolutely. Don't plan to see my postal worker. Okay. Now, um, so again, I'm in the back of my mind. I'm thinking niche, 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 niche. But I'm thinking, no, if these things aren't being seen, my niche might not be seen. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my cost of goods down to $1 or less. So I restrain myself today, guys. I did not go to the half price sale. I really wanted to go and get some more of those men's shirts. I really wanted to go and get some more of those women's plus size dresses in a swimsuit or two, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep my cost of goods down $1 or less for now. My savings is starting to go down a little bit. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm budgeting $1,000 for this trip. Now I'm not going to spend a thousand dollars on this trip because I've already paid for, you know, lodging and my plane and everything, but it's probably going to be more like $500. But guys, I have, this is the truth. Okay. I have not been out of town for one week since 2007. That's 16 years. Okay. 16 years. Normally when I go out of town, it's three to five days. I want to enjoy myself. I want to have fun. I don't want to be on my trip and going, that shirt costs $25. I don't think I can afford that. I'm, I'm not going to buy it. You know, that pair of earrings, do I really need it? You know, I want to buy things for the kids. I want to buy souvenirs. I want to go you know, um, I think Biltmore House, Barry, if you're still listening, I think it's $75 to get in. It's a once in a lifetime experience for me. And so I'm just going to try to spend, I'm not going to go like outlandish and just spend money like crazy, but I've been on, I've been in that position before where I, we have been strapped for money when, you know, in my old life, strapped for money. We go on a trip and everybody else is sitting there and, you know, your friends are drinking margaritas and you're drinking water because you can't afford a margarita. I don't want to, I don't want this trip to be that way. I, I want to be able to do what I want to do. And I was kind of like that when I went to eBay open, I was on a very strict budget when I went to eBay open. And I remember that. And I remember there are things that I kind of missed out on. I think somebody had a ticket to a show, a, an extra ticket, but I would have to buy it. And I thought, no, I really, I don't really want to spend the money. Um, now I wish I had, of course, but I didn't have it. I was a newbie seller. I you know, had barely much of my account and it was all I could do just to get myself up there and, you know, pay for the trip. So I don't know. Well, 
Okay. LSU has 17. Okay. There we go. And I don't know who's playing. Who has 14, Glenn? I don't know who you're playing. So Barry says, how about men's clothing? Well, I'm, I've already niched to that. Um, Barry, I'm selling men's shirts, 3XL and up. I got a lot of 6XL and 7XL last Monday. Um, I buy very few men's jeans because where I go in my honey hole, when I go there, all the great men's jeans are gone. There is a family that literally comes in at seven in the morning when they first open on the first day. And when you go in there at eight o'clock, they have two carts and they are piled way above the cart top. Um, with men's jeans. There's literally nothing good left. Now, I will find a pair of men's dress pants or casual pants sometimes that are great. Like I just sold a pair of Dockers the other day. They just happen to be mixed in with the women's clothing. They were in the wrong section. But I don't go down the men's pants. And sometimes I'll find a good pair of men's shorts mixed in with women's. But I don't go. The only thing I go through are men's uh, button-up collared shirts, basically. But a lot of times there's... Um, polos in there for five, six out, six XL. Um, sometimes there's a t-shirt or two that'll sell. And that's just what I do. So yeah, I have branched out a little bit into men's clothing. I'm thinking of Halloween lately. Well, I bet you are Christy. That's all you are about is Halloween. So I sold a Halloween shirt the other day. It's one of my few sales, still selling Christmas items, um, which you will see on my solds video on Wednesday. But yeah, I have sold a couple of Halloween items in the last couple of weeks. Santa, I need a stack of 100s, please. You too, Adam? Um, I'm not sure what you're responding to. Oh, oh, you need, you need $100 too. Well, I'm not bringing you any, Barry. I've already got my cash, by the way. I went to the bank and got all my cash, so... Uh, I was looking at eBay open pictures and videos today. Oh, I think my eBay open video may have been put back up, Adam. I have three of them. I, I did a vlog for three days. I think I put that one back up when I put my channel back up. I'm not sure. Um, I need to check my consignment store soon and see what I made last month. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you really do. You need to start. If you have any Halloween items, boy, you need to stock those. Yeah, 75 to 85 dollars, depending on if we do the via tour. Um, my boss was telling me about this app called Via Tour, where you can look for guided tours by people who know the history of all different places. That's how he saw France and Italy. It's been so hot, I've barely made enough to cover the booth cost. Oh, yeah. People just aren't out buying. Florida has 14. Okay, thank you. Hey, Don. Sorry, I'm late. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you, Don and Mary. Um, would love to do a show with you ladies sometime just for fun. Um, I've already talked about my topic, uh, my first topic. So, Don, if you uh, want to know my new way of taking inventory, counting, and keeping track, you might want to go back to the beginning when this is over. I'm so glad you're here. Um, you've come several times in the last couple of weeks. So, I'm glad I'm not working tomorrow. I have a big headache. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, that's terrible. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to keep my cost of goods down when I come back to a dollar or less. I don't know how long that'll go. And then um, I'm making the budget, right, for my trip. Okay, the next thing is I'm going to get uh, about 30 vintage plus size dresses from someone for free, okay? Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say it. It's from a family member. All right. I don't know if they'll sell, um, but most of them have only been worn once, like to a party or to a funeral or, you know, to a wedding. I've been asked to go and clean out this closet for months. And the reason I don't want to do it <laughs> right now is I know her. It's going to be very emotional. I'm going to go in the closet. I'm going to pick out an outfit and I'm going to say, here you go. And then she's going to tell me, the date it was worn, where it was worn, where she bought it. My understanding is some of them are still new with tags. And I'm perfectly willing to listen to that. And there may be a little bit of crying involved. But I would expect for like 30 dresses or so, it's going to take about five hours. <laughs> and I don't have that time right now. And I also don't have the emotional 
ability right now with a lot of stuff that's going on otherwise in our family to deal with that. But when I get back, if I need inventory, um, that's going to be for free. And I may even act, put some feelers out there to people. Hey, I need inventory. You got anything you can get rid of? Um, I'm going to go to the dollar sale tomorrow, just like any other dollar sale day, but I'm only going to buy tops, dresses, and men's shirts because those are like my big sellers right now. I'm not going to buy jeans. Jeans is like my fourth. So I'm going to concentrate mainly on tops and dresses because those are my two biggest sellers right now. And I'm probably not going to stay to get my hundred because I still have about, I don't know, 40 here. So when I get back, I need to have a hundred, uh, 97, 98 items ready to start processing. So I'm going to be prepared for that. And also in my garage, I have a laundry hamper stocked full of sweaters and tops and things that have an issue that have like a stain um, or spot that can be taken out easily. I just threw them on the hamper like two years ago and they were sitting over there in the corner. I had two hampers actually. And when I redid my office, I put them out in the garage and forgot about them. I finally went through one hamper about a month ago. So I'm going to use those items. Plus I'm going to get the ones from that lady plus this plus my thrift thrift haul tomorrow. So really keeping those costs of goods down. All right. Now I am selling. I'm selling hardly anything. So the good thing about that is that I'm not using poly mailers as much. I'm not using labels. I'm not having to order thank you notes and business cards. So that's one cost I'm not going to have for the next while. I usually order those about uh, every three months. And um, there was something else I was going to say about that. And I can't remember. I lost my train of thought. And then StreamYard, unfortunately, my uh, renewal is coming up this month. And that's like $220. Correct me if I'm wrong, Adam. I think the StreamYard is $220. And um, I'm not happy about that, but I got to pay it. So I have enough money and savings to last me several months for, um, you know, if I, if I just watch it. And then I'm sad to say that I've decided not to buy a GoPro. Sorry, Barry, but I am going to use Barry's GoPro while I'm there. And I was planning on buying it on Good Friday, unless something, I mean, I'm good, not Good Friday, um, Black Friday, unless something miraculous happens to my account, no GoPro this year. But I am going to use my cell phone and do vlogging um, as part of my uploaded videos to show people my daily reselling life because every day is different. And then another thing I'm going to do is I have 63 items in my ready to donate category. Those have been listed for two years. When I get back, I'm going to end those items. That's before I start taking inventory. I'm going to end those 63 items. I'm going to go through them, figure out if I want to relist them or chunk them. And then they will go into my drafts and they will be considered, you know, new items. So again, I won't have to purchase 63 more items. Um, all this to say that I can't call eBay right now because I'm on time away. And this number that I showed you that probably made your draw drop open who knows? It could have gone down even more because I'm on time away. I don't know that when you're on time away, you should they should still be able to see your store, but I can't call them and, and tell them all this. And then they're going to say, well, you're on time away for 15 days. Like, I can't do that. So when I get back from my trip, I'm going to give it a few weeks. And I think in October, if things have not improved, and by improved, I don't mean sales. I mean impressions. Okay. If I keep getting saying, hey, send offer, hey, send offer, that to me is improvement. It's not the sales, it's the the impressions. If it's not improved, when I get back, I'm going to give it until October, and then I'm going to call eBay, and I'm going to open a ticket and hoping that they can give me some, I'm just going to say, what can I do to be seen? Because I'm being seen on Poshmark, obviously. 
So what can you do for me? And I don't know. I'm a little bit scared. I have to be honest with you. I'm a little bit scared because, you know, I was talking to my wife about it. You know, she's like, this is exactly why I didn't want you to quit your job, Beth. Because we talked about it. I wanted to quit my job a few years ago. And she's like, what happens if eBay goes away? Then what are you going to do? Of course, I said, well, I guess I'll get another job. But um, it's starting to really um, bother me. And so we were talking about it last night. And she goes, see, this is exactly why I didn't want you to quit your job. You never know what's going to happen. So for that reason, I'm glad that I have saved up money. Let me go back up here for a minute. I will follow up once you are done. Okay. Thank you, Dawn. Finally got my thermal printer set up. Yay. Life is going to be so much easier for you, Christy. Uh, print's really small at the moment, so got to change the settings. Yeah, you got to do that. It And if every once in a while, my Rello printer will print my print really tiny, the whole label. And I don't, I don't know what that's about. And then I just redo it and it's fine. But every once in a while it does that. How is it working for you, Christy? She just wanted to know. Sounds correct. $25 a month yearly discount. I still use the free plan, but pay for Canva. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was very, very thankful that I had the StreamYard, um, whatever it's called premium today when I did that interview for my OCD podcast, because I had to record it and there were some features on there. I'm not sure I would have gotten with the free plan. So I'm very thankful that I did it. But when I took my channel down, um, what was that? February. Um, I had, you know, just gotten the subscription in September and I'm like, dang it. And, but I didn't cancel it. It's already had it. And so now I'm so glad that I kept it because I'm back on. <laughs> I love YouTube. I love you guys. Thermo is awesome. Just need to get different color stickers and I can make my own thank you stickers. Okay. And so like guys, if you didn't watch um, <sighs> Queen City Picker, I don't know if he's still here, but he had Johanna Parrish on, on Friday. She does print on demand and I, that's another thing. I don't think I'll get rich, but that's another thing that if I didn't have this OCD podcast, I would, I have like five designs already for t-shirts and, um, and back about a year ago, I was really seriously thinking about doing print on demand t-shirts, but after listening to Joanna, I'm thinking I might do something other than t-shirts. And so if you haven't seen Tom's show from Friday and you're interested in print on demand, she had some very, very good information. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking that might be where I want to go. Now that's long-term. That's not going to help me now, but I felt a lot better listening to Joanna talk. And I, I've listened to a lot of other people talk about it, but she was very, very um, helpful. And I think I might actually, I might actually try it. And I think Don, don't you and Mary do print on demand? Cell phones have great cameras these days. You will do fine that way until you work a GoPro or similar into your budget. Yeah, we bought this thing. It's in the other room. Um, it's a strap that you, it's a magnet that holds your GoPro. And then it has a little accessory that you put your uh, phone on. So all I have to do is just practice. I want to get it set up so I can go to the thrift store and do some like thrifting videos. Like, why did I not pick this up? And, you know, why did I pick it up? And then take you through my day and um, cause sometimes my days are really uh, they're really crazy, you know, and I think it's going to be really helpful for people who are starting reselling just to see what my day is like. Um, I don't know how I do it. And, and my, my phone, I think my phone takes pretty good videos. I haven't had anybody complain about my videos. Game changer, Sue. That's right. Your life will be so much easier. I've only used inkjet and two I have pissed me off. <laughs> yes, you get more storage and features with the paid plan on streamer. Yeah, so I had to, yeah, Telson. Thank you, Santa. Telson. Yeah, if anybody, um, 
once that I will um, maybe I should do a product review on it and put an affiliate link but just message me if you want to know it was it, it was twenty seven ninety nine when it Santa and that was like uh, it was it was on sale but Barry talked me into buying it and now I'm glad I did because I think part of the time I'm there I want to use the GoPro and part of the time I want to use my cell phone because I really want to practice on how to how do you know the angle you know we use t public now for our thc merch oh you do use t public we're thinking about designing for pod in the fall when we are less busy yeah um that's a good time to do it yeah t public that's what i haven't checked out she uses printful and i did I did look at Printful. It, it's just so confusing. It's just so freaking, there's so many of them. And then I got on these POD Facebook pages and everybody was talking about, well, the problems with this one and the problems. That, and I was just getting, oh my gosh, you know, just, uh, I think I even talked to Johnny about, uh, was he using Printify? Maybe he was using Printful. I don't remember. It's just so confusing. I, I just got to pick one and stick with it, right? But I'm really thinking that t-shirts may not be the way to go um i don't know thc merch awesome yeah that would be awesome and i could even you know print up some reseller robo shirts for that matter if i decide to do shirts or mugs or you know whatever while i'm in there i might as well print my little um my little icon you know the one that i can never get a get to go away this one right here i don't know why that's up there um I don't have it set for that. That's my old icon. And this is my new one. I think the reason this one comes up is that's what my Google, um, you know, my Gmail and all that is in the right hand corner up there. And it's just pulling it from that. I don't know why I can't see this here, but that's okay. But I like this for more of like a t-shirt. Like that's not going to look on a t-shirt. That's my old um, anger. Angry Otter has a video on pod okay see see that's the problem Don every <laughs> there's so much info and I mean I would trust angry otter but I don't know that what they're selling is what I'm selling and their experience is going to be my experience I don't want to put print on demand on my eBay because I don't want anything else to happen to my account. I can't afford to something happen on the other end. It doesn't get shipped out on time and then I lose my account. And so I'm not going to put it on eBay. I'm either going to open my own website, put it on Etsy or somewhere else because uh, I'm too, I'm too afraid. And I know most people have had no trouble, but you know, if, if anybody's going to make a mistake, I want it to be me. I don't want to take responsibility for it. Yeah, Angry Otter. He is selling mostly original designs for Halloween. Well, there you go, Christy. That's right up your alley. You would likely have to move the shipping out to five days. Uh, why is that? Can you explain that to me, Don? Why would you have to move the shipping out to five days? Um, Joanna has been doing puzzles. I guess I can say that because she talked about that on the show. She's been doing puzzles. That's something I've never thought of, but, uh, Joanna is a, a photographer. Okay. So like she'll take a picture of a mushroom, a wild mushroom, and she'll make a puzzle out of it. Okay. I can't do that. Like I'm not a photographer. I mean, my phone takes good pictures, but it doesn't take pictures. You know, she's using like a Nikon. Okay. Um, and I don't live anywhere around anything that anybody would want to see. Now, Janya about, eight years ago won a photography contest and she took the picture with her phone she was up on like the 20th floor on a building and this big rainbow went across the city and she took her she took her android and she took a photo of it and we had it printed and she had it and she entered it in a contest and she won it was gorgeous now i could see that on something on a puzzle but i don't know how it would come out on a puzzle having been done on a on a um an android it was an awesome photo to give them time to print and ship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I was worried because it would be more of a drop shipping arrangement. That's my issue. If there's going to be a problem, 
I want to be, I want to take responsibility for it. I don't want to take responsibility for somebody else's problem. And um, I know eBay really, a lot of people sell their print on demand on eBay and they don't have any problems, but it's not for me. It's just not for me. So, uh, but it's something, you know, I have five designs already done. You know, I just need to pick one, right? Um, I was going to wear my shirt that Amelia printed. It says, been there, dug that. It's got a picture of the bins, but it was wrinkled and I didn't have time to steam it. But to kind of promote hers, I think she's still got that shirt going. It was cute. I never seen anything like it. Okay, so before I go, I'm very curious how many of you are running Labor Day sales tomorrow? Um, what you're doing on Labor Day tomorrow, I'm going to go thrifting. Like I said, I'm going to, since I didn't do my, pick my wardrobe, I'm going to try on clothes from my store, get my wardrobe set up for the, for the trip, make sure everything's clean and packed. I wasn't planning to go to work on Tuesday. I was planning to work from home, but now my boss has decided he has a job for me that I can only do at the office. So I'll probably have to go in for like an hour Tuesday and then work from home the rest of the day. And um, for those of you that know, I cook for my dogs. We don't really use dog food much. We use kibble for when they're snacking or whatever. So I got to make sure I've got plenty of dog food made and, you know, do some things around the house. And so Tuesday is going to be probably a very nervous day for me. Um, also, I've been listening to, I don't know how many of you know that I have an extreme fear of flying. I've been listening every night to a meditation hypnosis on YouTube on the fear of flying. And it's very, very interesting. And I'm a lot better than I was a week ago. So I must keep listening to that. I may actually download it into my phone and listen to it when I'm on the plane. I got to, I got to change planes both ways. I've never changed planes before. So please don't tell me I'm safer in a plane than a car because I've heard that all the time. It has nothing to do with it. I have a fear of flying and it's not logical. And I know that. So what are you guys doing here? Uh, are you doing sales? Um, Well, I could have a second store done, but the problem is if they take my second store down, they will also take my first store down because they will be in the same ISP address. So I, I don't, I don't want anything. Um, I don't want a second store. You know, I see videos of people using AI to create those artsy adult coloring books. Yeah, we talked, they talked about coloring books. Um, that's another possibility with some of the things that I have in mind. I don't know. Again, you know, that's, we're talking pennies of, I'd have to sell, you know, umpteen hundred thousand coloring books to make a profit. So that's very long term. So that's not going to help me right now with my problem, but um, I'm getting a little nervous. Zero off sales for this weekend. 0% off sales for this weekend. Okay. So you're just keeping things basically the same. I am actually running the same sales. I always do 10, 30 and 50% off. And then I'm running a 40% off coupon tomorrow just so that I could say I did something different. Um, my experience with that is half the time people don't see the coupon. So majority of my sales, they will not use it. And when I send out offers tomorrow, I will, I will be sending out 40% off offers, no counter offer, because I always send out offers for whatever the coupon is for so that they don't come back and say, you know, I could have gotten more off if I'd used the dang coupon. So I will be sending off 40% offers tomorrow for one day and I need the money, you know, so I'm going to dollar day first thing in the morning. Okay. Awesome. Rita, I hope you get some great stuff. Just listing tomorrow. So nobody else is doing any kind of sale. Like I can't mention people's names, but I have been getting this weekend 50% off coupons in my email box of some of my saved sellers. I don't want to say their names because I don't know that they want me to say that, but, um, 
my experience with 50% off coupons, I got, I got nothing. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, that's what I'm doing. 40% off, take it or leave it. And I hope you all have a wonderful week. Don't forget that I will be uploading a video on Wednesday at 5 p.m. on the awesome sales from August that I had. And there were very few of them, but I think the video is about 12 minutes long. I would appreciate a thumbs up tonight. If you're not subscribed already, please consider doing so. I hope that you all have a wonderful Labor Day and a wonderful week. And remember, I'm going to be on from North Carolina next Sunday night. Don't know what time yet, but... I love you guys. May God keep you in his pocket. Bye.